In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features that I really like in the 2024.2 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. This month, we've got a mixed bag of new features, integrations and tweaks, but kicking this off, we've got some brand new changes to drag and drop. You may not have been aware, but we've been able to make use of drag and drop to reorder and rearrange triggers, conditions and actions all within the automation editor UI. And one of the reasons that you might not have been aware is because to actually enable this, you used to have to click a context menu and actually enable the reorder mode. As of this update though, that's been changed and you no longer have to enable this and this is actually enabled by default. So you can drag and drop until your heart's content. You may also notice that the little arrows that used to be on those items have now actually moved into a context menu. So if you wanted to, you can still make use of those arrows to move elements up and down and you just have to open this within that context menu. To further enhance drag and drop, you can now also drag and drop elements into other nested elements, which means you can now do things like drag conditions or actions into an if then or a choose building block. If you're one of those people that loves to drag and drop, then this one is definitely a welcome feature for you. At the time of recording this video, currently it's not yet supported in the mobile app, but I do believe this is coming in a future update. Next up, we've got update entities for ZHA. If you're a Zigbee to MQTT user, then this is something that you've pretty much always been able to do. So it's nice to see that it's finally available for ZHA users. If you weren't sure what this feature is, then essentially it's gonna allow you to update your Zigbee devices that are connected to your ZHA network if there's an update available. This means you won't have to use the default manufacturer or default hub or whatever came with that device to actually perform your update. You can just make use of Home Assistant and do it all in one place. Currently, there's only a few brands and devices that are supported, but this is the first initial rollout of this. So over time, more brands and more devices will be supported. One of the strange things about this is that when there's an update available, it will show up and the information will just be a long string of characters and numbers, but that's not actually something that Home Assistant can change because this information is pulled in through Zigbee and it's part of the Zigbee standard. So maybe in the future, there might be a way of getting a more friendly name, but as of yet, it's just a big long string of letters and numbers. Carrying on with my third feature, and we've got Tuya. If you've ever made use of Tuya in your Home Assistant setup, then you'll be well aware of the pain that is the setup of the Tuya integration. You have to create your developer account and you have to set up your API, and then you have to re-authenticate this and re-approve the API every couple of weeks, and it's just a pain. As of this update, this is all gonna change, and the brand new Tuya integration, which isn't actually a brand new integration, but we'll come back to that, as of this update, you'll actually be able to just do a simple setup that involves you just connecting your account to Home Assistant and it pretty much just works it just and it should works. work forever or until to year 180 and change it all. But essentially, two year have now set up and created a Home Assistant specific endpoint, which arguably they should have done right from the beginning. But using this endpoint, it allows us to have this simple integration flow so you can connect to your in-home assistant and access your devices within Home Assistant. So no developer accounts, no re-authenticating. That should now be a thing of the past. If you were previously using Tuya before this update, then you will have to now switch over to the new setup. But once you've done that setup, you'll be good to go and you'll be able to carry on using it as you did before. But in a few weeks time, you won't have to redo this. Or here's hoping. <laughs> My next feature is a nice and small one, but it's one that I really like and I think will be useful for lots of people, but it's integration authentication information within repairs. Previously, if you had an integration that had stopped working due to it failing to authenticate or it just needed to be reconfigured, maybe the token timed out or it needed a bit of work, maybe you've changed your password or whatever it might be, this information would only show up in the integration. So you'd see the integration that wasn't working and it would tell you you need to fix it. And you'd only actually spot this if you went into your integration tab. So this could lead to some cases where automations failed or things just didn't work as expected because you didn't know that that authentication or reconfiguration was needed. Well, now this will actually show up in the repairs menu. So you'll see a repair when one of these things happens and you'll see a notification. So it should be visible and easily for you to spot. And I really like that it is now more prominent and it's a nice feature change to see. My fifth and final feature for this update is custom responses. 
In a previous update, we got the ability to make use of sentence triggers, and this allowed us to write our own custom sentences and then trigger automations using that sentence by making use of assist. But one of the problems with this is there wasn't a very easy way to actually make your own custom response to actually reply to the sentence. So a normal sentence would always get the response of just done. Thankfully though, this has now been improved. And in this update, we now have the ability by making use of the UI to actually write our own custom responses. So you can set up your own custom response to whatever your sentence or automation is. And there we go guys, that's been 5 new features that I really like in the 2024.2 update. If you did enjoy this video then don't forget to drop me a like and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes, these awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members and if you're interested in becoming one of these awesome dudes then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to help support my channel all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.